my world, my world. I'm a fighter for the cause of my people's freedom. Kafa fai tu ni ma tu ake ake ake. Big ups, people. Two guests today for the show: Tom Peters, Social Equality Group, and Alex Hills of Free Assange NZ. Now, because I'm in the big city here, Wellington, I was just strolling in Cuba Mall, and I seen these two good folks protesting on the street. So I says, "Man, wow." I got a radio show just around the corner. You fellas want to come up? It's a Māori radio. Tu Poko Tika. It's, you know, it's the first Māori radio station ever. So that's something. Now, let's, let's check our mics. See, we've got something Hello. here. Hello. Uh, thank you. It's an honour. Oh, you're having us. Thank, thank you very much because... Um, as we you know we've experienced basically the the media in new zealand is uh, saying virtually nothing about the really um disgraceful uh treatment of julian assange and his imprisonment in britain and the attempt by the united states to extradite him and put him on trial as though he was a spy mm. um so just like to say thanks for actually having us and giving us the opportunity to to talk about what's going on just in case there's any martians here who don't even know who julian assange is people from other planets or anything like that fill us in uh, who is Julian Assange? What has happened? Sure. Um, well, Julian Assange, um, and, uh, uh, well, just to explain, first of all, I, I'm from the Socialist Equality Group, as you said, and mm -hmm. we've written about, um, we've written hundreds of articles about what's happening with Julian Assange uh, on the World Socialist website. Um, but to give you a summary, I mean, Assange is the founder of WikiLeaks, um, and he and WikiLeaks has has released material on many different countries, um, l you know, leaked cables, leaked documents, um, exposing government and corporate corruption. Uh, and um, and what Assange is most known for is the leaked cables from the U.S. military uh, from Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, and some people may remember this was in 2010, where WikiLeaks um, put out, you know, uh, thousands of, of cables from U.S. embassies and from the U.S. Army. And the most infamous of those was a video from a, taken from a helicopter gunship in Iraq, which um, showed the, uh, the that gunship opening fire on a, a group of um, innocent people in a street. Some, a few of them were journalists from Reuters. A few of them were children. A few of them were children, and um, and it was a video that shocked the world, um, and. Uh, and it was leaked to WikiLeaks by by Bradley Manning, a, an army private who, who's now known as Chelsea Manning. Um, and uh, as a result of that, WikiLeaks, you know, became world famous and um, all of those cables which detailed the day-to-day -day war crimes and killings that were going on um, in those wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, um, which had largely been, you know, out of sight uh, from mm -hmm. from the general public. Mm -hmm. I mean, there weren't many journalists who were in those countries, except for those who were embedded with the U.S. military. Mm. And so WikiLeaks was able to provide people with a very detailed picture of the the you know, brutal imperialist, you know, the brutal nature of imperialist war in our time. Mm. Uh, and and it uh, was, yeah, it shocked the world, mm. basically. I mean, WikiLeaks publications have been used in an incredible number of um, court cases um, for human rights, for genocide, for war crimes. And I mean, I think the most disturbing thing now today, all these years later, after those initial leaks and leaks that have come out ever since on spying and all sorts of things, I think the most disturbing thing now is that both on the left and the right of most parties in uh, Western governments are still sitting those very same war criminals who 
brought us um, fake news, Iraq, weapons of mass destruction, mm -hmm. and millions dead, billions have lost their privacy, and we're all, you know, happy to accept it. And the anti-war protesters in the process have been completely quashed, silenced, deplatformed, algorithmed out of existence. And so it's very worrying. And as a mother, I am I'm fighting really for my children's free press here. I'm taking it really personally, and I do not want to leave it for my children to sort out this mess, which is what we're doing at the moment because of the gross disinformation out there. Kate Fakarungo Koto, and I told you Alex Hills. Now, Alex. Can you explain something about yourself? I know you didn't just get into activism with no. freeing Assange. No, um, I think initially my main um, my main concern was the environment, actually. I mean, I used to protest a little bit about, because I'm an architect, um, and I've been on this radio station before, talking about the building industry and some of the problems there. Um, but then at some point during my activism, um, environmental activism, I suddenly realised that the, we really weren't going to be able to have governments being held to account until such time that these these crimes are punished actually but also that journalists are allowed to speak out about the corruption especially when they're delivering facts you know and when I realized that really environmental protesters are not going to get anywhere while our governments are controlled in this way by forces that are really more interested in the military complex unfortunately journalists have come into like a whole they're a whole new thing nowadays mm. Mm. yes I mean everyone <laughs> can be a journalist can't they but I mean I think one of the other worrying things about the algorithm that's um, controlling how people see information on social media is that we really are losing our voice and that's why you're not seeing millions of people like you did on the streets during the Iraq wars um, and the, the illegal invasions for resources and oils. You know, we, we, don't get, we don't get those people on the street anymore because it has been propagandized out out mm. of, yeah, of well, existence <laughs> pretty much I mean all the very famous journalists that are award winning journalists like John Pilger um, Chris Hedges you know the people that really stood up and fought against the government no matter what it did to their reputation those people have been sacked from most mainstream outlets and very few people will actually give them a voice on something with a big flat platform and, and it really they're forced to go to places like RT Russian television or yeah, uh, right. or independent media and they're going to tiny little crowds and there's an and awful I play lot some of, of these those. people on here. Great. Mm. Yeah, Chomsky, Pilger, yeah. Um, Hedges. There's an awful lot of really great reporting going on there, but they've all been deplatformed. Um, so this is of concern, and the algorithm is of concern because it really is quashing free speech. Mm. Um, and I think free speech arguments have got all wrapped up into a right wing, left wing thing, and I don't think it's about that anymore. We have to protect everyone's free speech. Well, I remember. We really do. John Pilger exposing what was going on in East Timor. Right. Mm. In uh, what year would have that been? Uh, 90s, the late mm. 90s. Yep. And, you know, we don't get such... Uh, well, WikiLeaks is doing that sort of expose or whatnot of it, of all these atrocities that are going on. And But the thing nowadays is, yes, we have especially the U.S. government coming down on everybody, especially mm. Julian Assange. Mm. And if we can go back to Julian Assange and yes. explain some of the falsehoods that mm. the, the mainstream media has been putting across. Yes. Uh, I mean, the um, w well, our protest today actually is, is the six-month anniversary of um, uh, Julian Assange being arrested from the Ecuadorian embassy where he sought refuge um, and sought asylum from Ecuador in London uh, seven years ago. And um, this is, you know, the biggest assault on freedom of speech, freedom of the press uh, of our of our time mm. that we're living through. The attack on WikiLeaks and on Assange and on Chelsea Manning as well. Mm. Um so, you know, uh, Assange, uh, following the, the release of the cables on the Iraq and Afghan wars, uh, there was almost an immediate attempt to basically shut down WikiLeaks. Um, and mm -hmm. the, main, the main plank of the, the main way that that was carried out was to demonize Assange. Um, and uh, the, um, you know, the, the, the way that was initially done was to basically frame him, uh, we now know, for, mm. for sexual assault mm. uh, in Sweden. Um, ne you know, no, no charges were ever laid, um, but these allegations were made against him, um, totally without 
substantiation uh, in order to you know tarnish his reputation and to try and get him extradited from from the UK back to Sweden. Um, at that point, uh, Assange. Uh, you know, said, well, Assange's legal team said, look, you know, we're perfectly happy for Assange to answer questions from the Swedish authorities on this, um, but you've got to give a guarantee that you're not going to extradite him back to the United States, where they'll put him on trial and potentially torture him mm. and, and put him in jail for releasing information about war crimes. Mm. And now the Swedish authorities said, no, we're not going to give you any guarantee such as that. At that point, Assange concluded, well, there's a real danger that I'm going to be extradited to the United States. So he sought refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy and um, and uh, they granted him at that time, which was um, 2012, I believe, mm. granted him asylum. The, the mm. Ecuadorian government did, um, you know, in, very courageously and um, in defiance of the United States uh, and and he spent, you know, the next seven years unable to leave his small, you know, apartment inside the embassy. Mm. Um, you and know. Many, of pe many, many people accused him of trying to escape sexual assault uh, charges when the actual fact was he was trying to escape extradition to the US. Yes. He was mm. called a conspiracy theorist. And now, I mean, no one can deny that he wasn't actually under a US extradition order for espionage because that's exactly mm. what happened. So he's been proven exactly right. But another fact that not many people know is that before Sweden, they actually tried it on in, 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 in Iceland where he was living. They tried exactly the same strategy there, but they didn't achieve achieve it because they've got a lot of people on side in Iceland and some within the government who recognise what was happening. An MP from Iceland actually had to throw a plane load of FBI agents out of Iceland because they were trying to frame Assange there and mm. months later they managed to hold a conference in Sweden and pretty much do exactly what they were trying to do in Iceland and I just mm. think that that's all on record now very easily easily found that an MP from Iceland threw out FBI agents for trying to set him up. So basically the the, the, the case has been sitting in investigative stage for nine years for a good reason. And the reason is mm. to hold something that will give you a slime factor about Julian over his mm. head, but not resolve it, not resolve it for anyone's benefit. And in fact, the head of the Swedish bar is a lady who has said, if you were going to extradite Assange, to, you know, it, it, extraditing someone to Hitler's Germany for reporting concentration camp crimes, uh, you, you would not do that, would you? you know? And she also held in contempt the processes that have been going on in Sweden. Swedish court system hmm. has been trying to throw it out for so many years and yes. the British have destroyed all correspondence on it. So it's just going to stay in limbo land and that's how they like it. But um, we do know that British authorities, the British government you know, placed pressure on Sweden, you know, do not drop this investigation um, and you know, tried to get them to drag it out mm. despite the complete lack of any evidence yeah. against Assange. Um, however, you know, the whole thing has been, as you say, totally discredited mm. uh, and um, and so then uh, in 2016 uh, they came up you know the US basically came up with new ways to try and discredit Assange by claiming that he had you know at that WikiLeaks had helped to place Donald Trump in, in the White House mm. um, so that and became there was a court case Right, that became mm. the new line of attack. What, what they never said was, you know, beca because WikiLeaks had released extremely damaging documents about Hillary Clinton mm. and her, you know, speeches to, to Wall Street bankers basically promising to do their bidding in, when, if she was elected president. Um, and uh, what about the hundreds of millions for weapons of deals from Saudis? Yes, that yeah, it, yeah, that, that. that's right. Yeah, um, mm. yeah, war so, mongers, yeah, war mongers, basically. And so, what we're doing right now is our, our collective governments are going to um, lock up a journalism for, for, for doing his job, mm. and um, they've certainly been locking up whistleblowers who were morally obliged to reveal what they did. I mean, we're talking about our, our governments in our name murdering millions of people since 2001. Mm. We, we can't deny that, and it seems to have been glossed over in the press incredibly. Mm. Yeah. Now, um, I'm totally disgusted, of course, with Ecuador, as no doubt you two mm. are, mm. but I don't see the good old, jolly old England, mm. you know, I, I think they're going to give them over, I'm about to, you know, I'll say that, I can't see them not 
get, handing him over to the United Skanks about who mm. do you have that none of your business. Mm. Well, well, that's right, and you know that that, ha- but it has to be stopped. I mean, a, a line has to be drawn for one thing because Julian Assange's life is in danger. Mm, he's um, dying, w- literally. We, we are, you know, we're talking about someone who hasn't really seen natural sunlight for about seven or eight years, mm-hmm. and you know has been first of all cooped up in the Ecuadorian embassy. Then he was taken out. They put him on on trial uh, hurled him in front in front of a judge um this was six months ago and said uh you know y- you're you, you skipped bail basically because he was on bail for this extradition hearing to sweden but asylum law trumps bail law anyway so exactly. actually they've basically discarded all their laws. it was it was <laughs> it was a totally illegal operation yeah seizing him from the ecuadorian embassy when he had been granted asylum and citizenship by ecuador mm-hmm. and so the the new ecuadorian government Government, you know, is totally complicit in this. Mm. Um, you know, they, they did it in order to get a, a loan from the IMF. Uh, yeah, an IMF, IMF. loan, which mm. at first was looked like it was 4.2 billion, but it looks like now the reports mm. are that there's as much as 10 billion, of which 4.2 was signed over on the day of the arrest. Mm. Mm. And now we have yes, there's people on the streets. There are people being mm. shot. I don't know if that's being reported, but I've got some good context there, and there are people being shot for protesting at the moment mm-hmm. in Ecuador. And the reason being is that they had subsidies in there to protect their citizens from high petrol prices mm. and those have been removed by order of the US yes. so of course everyone's up in arms because everyone's businesses are failing now you know and that's that's you know what yeah. happens isn't it um, but um, what's astounding is that laws that were set down after the world war um, you know from a country that produced the Magna Carta we're now in a situation where we have a mm. judge calling Assange a narcissist before he even uttered a word I don't know if he mm. even uh, uttered yeah. a word mm. in his case he, called him a narcissist she is the one who's in, in bed with the weapons dealers actually yes. literally and um, you know a military complex um, stooge yeah. uh, and she is allowed to hear his case <laughs> a jury aunt just to explain yeah, yeah. you're talking about Judge Emma Arbuthnot thank you I'm she, not good at my name she, she's the one <laughs> oh, yeah. who's, in, who's going to you know um, uh, what's the word preside over um, Assange's extradition case and her husband is a former conservative Conservative Party MP with very close connections to the British weapons manufacturers. Right. Yeah. So here you have a, an example of class justice mm. in Britain. Um, it's the ruling class, the people who are guilty of war crimes, who are, you know, going after Assange because he exposed those crimes. Mm. Um, the the uh, as you say the the, the collapse of um, Anything resembling the rule of law right. is is just astounding, but it's a, it's a worldwide process. Yeah. Um, if if I could just say something about the New Zealand government yes, in all of this, indeed. I mean, you know, th- they are equally complicit. Um, as a member of the Five Eyes Alliance, uh, led by the United States, but you know, I mean, the, the um, and and I'll yes, I'll I'll get Alex to explain about the um the role of the current government yeah. but but the the labor government in um, under helen clark uh back in uh, 2003 2004 uh is often thought about as you know they resisted the united states they didn't go to war in iraq well in actual fact new zealand sent 60 combat engineers to iraq yes exactly. and and they did that and wikileaks exposed the reasons for that because in 2010 wikileaks released a whole series of cables from the u.s embassy in wellington along with many other places any many other embassies around the world and one of the cables from wellington uh, revealed that U.S. diplomats had placed pressure on the Clark government and told the Clark government, among other things, look, Fonterra has a very lucrative supply contract for Iraq under the oil under the oil for food program um, that existed before the war. Now, if Fonterra wants to continue exporting to Iraq, you have got to support our invasion. And so when when the U.S. made that argument, the the government in New Zealand said, "Okay, well, we'll do that." 
you know, from Terra, spelled with the R at the end. From, yeah, from, terror, yes, terror. Exa- exactly. Yes. So that shows you the totally mercenary um, operation that is the New Zealand government mm. and, and the reasons it went into Iraq. It had everything to do with just trade and money for Fonterra. And mm. you could describe, I, I think that cable from WikiLeaks, which revealed that, has been described as the blood for milk cable <laughs> um, yeah. because that's what it was. Mm. Um, so so therefore, you know, that's, that's the key to understanding why this government uh, is not saying anything in defense of Julian Assange. Um, mm. and, and maybe, Alex, you, yeah. can, you can explain why. So, so Free Assange yeah. NZ no. started about a year ago when we thought we should put a petition in. We were beginning to get very concerned about um, it all. And so we, we put in an emergency petition. All we asked is that the New Zealand Parliament discuss asylum for Julian Assange, given given the good services that he's done for the people. Um, we got a lot of trouble, actually, but we weren't able to host our petition on Action Station. They wanted us to change wording to something that I was really unhappy with, which would have only helped to smear Julian further with lies. Um, so we decided to go with the government website for petitions, and the thing was attacked the entire time while we had the petition up. Everyone was reporting server errors. No one. I've watched people tried to do it in front of me and they were just having endless trouble. So we got 2,000 signatures in four weeks considering quite a lot of censorship and we waited for our answer and our answer was there is no jurisdiction for us to talk about asylum in Parliament in New Zealand. We have no jurisdiction to discuss this. <laughs> and I mean, I think that really speaks <laughs> volumes. You should be able to what, speak anything in right, the Parliament. Right, well, you right. should be able to discuss. <laughs> yeah, and that was all we asked. We never asked for them to solve all the difficult problems of how to get him out of the embassy, which it would have been at the time. We didn't ask for any of that. What we really wanted to do was put them on their toes and make them take a stand one way yeah. or the other. So this was a... 2018? Yes, yeah. 2018. So mm. this is when Free Assange NZ got going and I really started my activism, really was part of doing that and that went really, really well. Um, we got our answer back. But um, after about a year of doing this now, um, New Zealand has actually been responsible for some wonderful work um, globally now for WikiLeaks and for Julian Assange um, and came up with candles for Assange um, about... May this year, a few weeks before Julian's birthday, um, because we'd had a viral image last year around his birthday which said, free Assange in candles outside the Parliament building, we said, oh, we're going to do it again this year, only in front of the US Embassy, um, and we invited the world to join us, and 62 cities came on board and came with Wellington and held this wonderful birthday protest. I put press releases out, I rang up media stations, I tried to get the word out, I thought it was a really good feel-good feel story that, that we'd managed to achieve. I mean, some of those 62 cities, they were just one person with a candle at a war memorial, it di- but it didn't matter. Yeah. The fact was that a New Zealand group has inst- instigated this one world action and no one was happy to report on it. And I rang mm-hmm. up um, RNZ the next day and I spent quite a long time trying to get through to someone, finally was talking to the news desk and they asked me to spell Assange, which point I got really angry. Mm. And then, uh, I mean, this is the news desk, this was not the receptionist. I then spoke to a journalist and I said, look, we're having awful trouble getting our protests recorded and shown on any media whatsoever can you tell me is there some kind of control on on this is there some sort of um, mechanism that's stopping positive news on Julian Assange I mean another example of that kind of news is the DNC case that no one heard anything about where WikiLeaks won against the DNC and Mueller was ordered to stop talking about Russia and WikiLeaks because there was no evidence maybe, maybe we should just explain that a yeah, bit but, but this is stuff <laughs> yeah. that is not yeah. even discussed yeah. in in, in media here and it's just right. the same you know and I asked her why Why are we Mueller having so is, much trouble getting some positive news out about Assange yeah. is there some kind of control over it mm. and she had you know she just refused to she refused so, to so show anything about the, the protest the, sorry, sorry just, yeah, yeah. just I, I think we should explain about explain the, DNC. the DNC yeah that's yeah. the Democratic National <laughs> Committee thank you um, in the, the United States yeah. which, which tried to sue WikiLeaks um, over the over the, the, le- true the leaks about Hillary Clinton the yeah. true information that WikiLeaks revealed about the corruption of the Clinton campaign, um, its attempt to you know, sabotage mm. Bernie Sanders' campaign, among other things. Mm. That they revealed that. Um, and Clinton's, um, you know, craven uh, 
antics in her speeches to the Wall Street banks yep. and her deals with the Saudi Arabians and, mm. and so on. All of that. Ad infinitum. Exactly. So, so you know, uh, instead of instead of dealing with with um, all of those true um, facts that were revealed, the, the Democratic National Committee um, took out a lawsuit against WikiLeaks and and this was, um, you know, the, the lawsuit failed and, mm. and the judgment went in favor of WikiLeaks. But, but you won't hear anything about it. And, mm. and this is and there's plenty of smears like it. Don't, mm. don't get me wrong. There's a lot of news about Julian Assange and WikiLeaks in, right. in New Zealand media. But, oh, my God, have you found a positive piece? It's mm. pretty hard. Let me ask you something <laughs> about uh, our army here, because mm. we've made war heroes of a chap from here, Māori, who went over there and, mm. I don't know, he was probably killing children. But there's, mm. there's now some war here. I can't think of his name even. I mm. don't need to mention it. Mm. But, yeah. you know, this whole we don't get involved in these wars of the US, we're in the, in the mall and we're in Afghanistan. Mm. Mm. And uh, so what are, they, what are our soldiers doing over there? Mm. What, are, what are they actually doing? We don't get to know, we're not allowed to know. And it's just, yes. it's just pathetic. Yes. Well, exactly. And in fact, I don't know if people have seen this, but yesterday it was reported that the, um, the New Zealand Security Intelligence Service uh, has um, been forced to apologise because it spied on Nikki Hager, mm. the journalist, who mm -hmm. um, to find out who his sources were when he published the book about New Zealand and Afghanistan, um, mm. Other People's Wars, back in 2011. So this, this, you know, it's just been revealed that when he published all of that, which was about what New Zealand was doing in Afghanistan, um, including you know war crimes or, or allegations of war crimes. Mm. Um, that, w you know, the SIS tried to spy on him illegally uh, to find out who his sources were. Uh, and, um, you know, what is, yeah, it's a very good question. What What is New Zealand still doing? Because New Zealand troops are still in Iraq and mm -hmm. Afghanistan. You know, the Ardern government has kept them there. Um, they have strengthened ties with the United States. And we hear very little about it. Um, the reality is New Zealand is an imperialist country, um, part of the alliance led by the United States. And, uh, you know, to get its slice of the pie um, and to get U.S. support for New Zealand imperialism in the South Pacific, you know, the control over all of these small mm -hmm. island countries, it, um, you know, that relies on the U.S. support uh, for New Zealand. Mm. In return, we've got, you know, the, the New Zealand government sends thousands of people off to fight in every U.S. war since, mm. since the Korean War, you know, Korea, Vietnam. Um, New Zealand's been involved. Yeah, fighting yeah. on the wrong side always. <laughs> right. They, they've been yeah, found no. guilty of um, spying but on Keith Locke when he was a child. Keith Locke mm. is a Green MP who um, we've now found out that because of his parents being political activists, they literally he has been spied on almost all of his life. Mm. Um, mm. Do we know? Did you know that 117 people are seeking asylum from New Zealand? And we have Susie Dawson in Russia at the moment trying to get asylum, political asylum there after her revelation on the Five Eyes, G GCSB, and her work on Occupy New Zealand. To leave here. She's, 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 here. The, she's the, the leader or the former leader of the Internet Party New Zealand who is in asylum in Russia. And there are 117 people since 2002 seeking asylum from New Zealand. So even wow. this country... You know, and this really just speaks to what Susie Dawson's trying to reveal, which is the fact that we aren't just the five eyes, actually. We are the 43 US allies eyes, and they're all working together, including mm. the media, in order to quash anti-war, quash dissent, anything that's against the government policy, TPP, anything that we don't like, it's got to be silenced. So Mm -hmm. So from our point of view, I mean, as socialists speaking as from the Socialist Equality Group and the, and the International Committee for the Fourth International, the defence of Julian Assange and Chelsea Manning, who we haven't really talked about, mm. but Chelsea Manning, who's been thrown back in prison, she's been in prison, she was put in prison first under Obama. For, and tortured. And tortured, kept in isolation. Um, you know, psychologically tortured, which which she spoke about when she visited New Zealand mm. a couple of years ago, yeah. and um, 
And now, uh, in the, you know, for leaking these cables to WikiLeaks, she's been in jail for the past six months um, under the Trump administration because she's refusing, in, in very bravely, refusing to give uh, any kind of testimony to help them in their case against Julian Assange. And, and it should be noted that this case will be heard in the court in Virginia, mm. where there will be no jury. I mean, it really is a kangaroo court. Um, um, yeah, so mm. it's, it's a pretty worrying thing. I mean, it's basically the, the main concern is that it's a chilling effect on journalism that this is going to have. Mm. Massive. A war on journalism. A war on journalism mm. that's going on. Yeah. Great to fuck along Koto, keep the kupu na te kupu, and with me today in the studio, Tom Peters, social equality group. Socialist. Socialist. Yes. Socialist equality, equality group. Equality group, yes, and Alex Hills of Free Assange NZ. Okay, back to the subject at hand. Let's mm. uh, talk about Edward Snowden and mm. Chelsea Manning and, yeah. Right. Well, well, Edward Snowden, I mean, has also been subject to U.S. persecution um, and f was forced to seek asylum in Russia. Um, if, if, you know, and uh, many people are familiar with, with the uh, massive exposure of, um, you know, NSA and Five Eyes spying throughout the world um, that he revealed, uh, you know, basically the, the, the U.S. intelligence agencies are spying on uh, all electronic communications, um, and that extends to New Zealand. As a member of the Five Eyes Alliance, um, Edward Snowden revealed, if you remember back in 2014, I think, um, that um, that New Zealand, you know, I think he said every internet communication um, is being collected uh, mm -hmm. and entered into a database uh, that the NSA and the Five Eyes partners, that is Canada, Britain, Australia, New Zealand, can all can all access. Um, so, you know, along with along with the previous revelations that Assange and Chelsea Manning revealed about U.S. war crimes, um, we then had these revelations from Edward Snowden, and taken together, that has um, contributed to what we are seeing now, which is a massive radicalization, especially among young people around the world, um, and interest in socialism um, and hostility towards capitalism and imperialism. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we see the fight to free Assange and the fight to free Chelsea Manning as really the spearhead of a fight against war. Um, I mean, the U.S. is going after these people uh, and uh, and seeking to uh, imprison, torture, and even kill them, um, because you know to set an example mm -hmm. for any for any other opponents of war, for anyone any other whistleblowers or principled journalists who want to report war crimes, um, this is what will happen to you. Mm. You know, you will be locked up. Uh, it doesn't matter about the law or human human rights. That's all, you know, they, yes, they, yeah. th that's all out the window. Yeah. And, um, and that's what is happening here, uh, is to send a message. Yeah. They um, don't care how many laws they throw out the window, yeah. whether they're asylum laws from the world mm. wars or whether they're like, you know, mm. just, you know, happy as corpus. You know, I mean, you, are, you are innocent until proven guilty. They're just, yeah. they don't care. It, he's going to go down because he has to have he has to be made an example of yeah. just yeah. so that journalists are scared. That and, really and is you it. know they want to do that to Edward Snowden as well. I mean, if he was not able to get to Russia, he'd be in prison right now in the United States, mm. no yeah. doubt, and being mm. tortured um, and uh, kept in isolation. And um, you know there would be a grand jury um, set up to to frame him for espionage, mm, yeah. just as there is with Assange. So you know these people are heroes, um, and they have got to be defended. Mm. And anyone who cares about free speech, who opposes war, who cares about you know uh, freedom of journalism, um, has got to uh, support this campaign um, throughout the world. Really? I mean we, we are in a period now of history where there is a looming another. Looming Looming economic crisis, um, which will be on the scale of you know surpassing 2008, uh, and uh, the world is plunging into um, an extremely dangerous time. 
Uh, the United States is waging a trade war against China. Mm -hmm. um, these are the policies uh, that are straight out of the 1930s, mm. which led to World War II. Um, the policies of fascism are making a comeback. You know, I mean, Donald Trump is whipping up this um, ultra xenophobia and hatred of immigrants. Yeah, but also on the other side, you've got the xenophobia of the fake Russiagate, which mm. um, the, what I was getting to in that previous mm. discussion about the DNC case was mm. that the, the, the actually the Democratic Party and Mueller have been ordered not to conflate WikiLeaks and Russia anymore because there is no evidence and there never has been. And yes. sometimes I wonder whether the Mueller investigation was never about impeaching Trump and was more about discrediting some people like WikiLeaks. It does yes. seem to have been more what the goal, the goal of it was, you know, that just seems to be what the outcome has been is that the well, Russiagate well, has caused well, this well, ridiculous fear. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what you're referring to is, is that, you know, Russiagate, just to explain in case yeah. people don't know, you know, the, the Democrats have, their main complaint against Donald Trump is not any of those other things he's doing. It's not the fascism. It's not the racism. They not don't the care about dealings, that. Mm, no. you know, yeah. what, what they, they cheer on the wars. Right. You know, they totally support they the US They give him double wars. the funding for military exactly. than he asked yeah. for. So there's yeah. a... There's a but he's meant to be a scary... Dictator, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. There's a bipartisan support for war yeah. in, in the United States. But the differences are the Democrats don't think Donald Trump is going after Russia as he should be, according mm. to them. He's not a warmonger um, enough. He's not warmonger <laughs> enough, according to them. Or he's too unreliable. Yeah. And so, you know, he's changing his mind all the time. Mm. They, they can't, you know. The, so the main campaign of the Democrats against Trump is based on that, based on oh. demonizing Russia and trying to prepare for war against Russia. Um, so no one should be under any illusion that this whole impeachment attempt is in any way progressive. No. It's, it's, it's partisan well, to no. the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, um, yeah so, so the, the point, I guess, what I was trying to do is just to, to say what's happening to Assange and Manning um, is part of this overall context mm. of, of a, a global preparation for war mm. led by the United States. Um, and Britain um, is totally on board with it, as is Australia. We haven't mentioned the Australian government, mm. but Aus Julian Assange is an Australian citizen. Yes. And they are a key US ally. Um, they a have, good Aussie. They have done absolutely, you know, successive governments, Labour and the Liberals in Australia, have done absolutely nothing to defend Julian Assange's rights as an Australian citizen mm. who's, yeah, be, who's exactly. been thrown in jail, you know. For journalism. For journalism. So mm. citizenship, yeah. Yeah. Forget it. it. Right. I mean, I mean, you know, he's being pursued by these gangsters in the United States. Um, exactly. And... and um, and the uh, you know the, the the Australian government supports them. Mm. Um, it's absolutely shameful. And well, they had a hand in some of the disinformation uh, transfer of RussiaGate as well. I mean, the Alexander right. Downer mm. is responsible for a whole bunch of the disinformation that they were able to carry on pretending that there was some kind of Russia hacking of the election. Mm. Mm. You know? And I don't think they've adequately um, come back from that point. They've just stopped talking about it. As soon as they got busted, it suddenly just went out of the media and now you've got Ukraine Gate. So mm. bells and whistles, smoke and mirrors. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I can see them losing. Puppets. I can see them losing the election next year just because they're. Hmm. Oh, because of their idiots. policy is I'm not Trump. Yeah, that's their yeah. only policy. Yeah. That's right, and it's not a great one. I mean, they're the extreme centre, extreme centre. Like they're extremists. I mean, I mean, Bernie Sanders. I, I, I don't, you know, I, I haven't ever thought anything of the guy. I but did, I think, but I, I did was like fooled. The people, <laughs> the people that were supporting him. I think there's a lot of good yeah. heart there, mm. but he's he's not the guy. Mm. And I, I had to <laughs> I had to tell some people, oh, no, I think he's. But good. I think that I said, um, nah, the fact I mean, that they're even talking about socialism in America, where they've tried to do anything to make communism a very. I mean, look at McCarthy era, where they were trying to like witch hunt anyone who had anything to do with Russia. Mm. They went trying. They're they doing did. that again. <laughs> yeah. They're well, doing it well, again, but it's all yes. a bit of a distraction feel. Just well, to, you, you know, saw, oh, um, don't look at the broken democracy. You know, you will have seen maybe. Uh, listeners will have seen the um, rant by Donald Trump at the United Nations where <laughs> he, you know, spent a large chunk of that speech was just attacking socialism. Yeah. You know, socialism <laughs> is the, like the devil. Right, let's, um, get, a, let's yeah. get a good definition from you yeah. about 
on socialism. Just in a yeah. nutshell. So actually, okay. so like an eight-year-old could understand it. That's All right. Well, it's very simple. I mean, in a nutshell, uh, socialism means uh, the, the working class that produces all the wealth in society should get to control how that wealth is used. Um, and um, socialism, so, so in other words, the means of production, the major businesses, the major industries, the major banks, all of that should be placed under common democratic control and ownership so that we can actually use the wealth created by society to end poverty, to end homelessness and hunger, um, and stop you know, funding the militaries uh, and um, abolish national borders, which are completely outdated, um, allow people to live where they want. Um, and um, yeah, is there anything else it I feels like? I mean, I mean, the main the main core of it is capitalism is in a huge crisis. It's totally unsustainable and it's leading us towards a third world war. Um, there's massive levels of social inequality and poverty. Uh, there's about, I don't know, a dozen people in the world who control the same amount of money mm. uh, between them as the bottom 50%. Yeah, the statistics well, you know, are a lot of off, people off get the scared of welfare mm, yeah. states where you've got people that are getting lazy or whatever and not, mm. not going to do any work anymore. But what we've got at the moment, I would argue, is more of a welfare state for the 0.0.1%. Mm. And they're the only recipients of socialism or Not welfare tax, in the world and the only people that are getting any benefits and the 99.9 percent .9 really are doing all the work mm, mm. and this is this is the incredible thing is that that you will hear arguments against socialism against the welfare but really the welfare is being trained straight into that 0.1 percent mm, and yes. that's why we've got such gross inequality now mm. also the definition you just gave on socialism now how far would off would you say that is from communism because communism was the word that was the big big baddie word mm, through mm. the 50s etc but i've never had a problem with communism i think it, well, it sounds fine you know that's right i mean i would use the words interchangeably um and that's what marx how marxists use the, those terms uh I, I mean it's very difficult to summarize in, in a very brief period of time um i guess some people might say communism is a more advanced form of socialism um but you know the the uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a very important question. I think what we're seeing around the world and the reason that Donald Trump and not only Donald Trump, but Donald Trump Boris. in particular, you know, the, the reason that they rant so much about socialism now is mm -hmm. very, it's very interesting phenomenon. They are frightened. Mm -hmm. They are terrified. People are digging it. All, all exactly. The place exactly. And there is. And a, that's what Bernie represented you know, too, because the working. amount of young yeah. people who woke up after the Bernie um, mm. cheating of the election from Bernie, you know, mm. um, I think the amount of people who woke up and got interested in politics because of him talking mm. and then saw him being completely quashed. And I mean, I think personally, from my point of view, I'm not in the Socialist Equality Party, but I would say that I was definitely left-leaning for sure. Mm. But one of my problems with the governments at the moment is that we've lost all the balance. So, you know, it's actually quite nice to have liberal arguments, libertarian arguments. Sometimes there are some things potentially that the right wing are right about. But in general, we have lost our left wings all around the world. We've lost them all. So it's all become centre and then we've got our right wings. So basically, if you lose that balance, you don't get people like Tom talking about socialism and welfare on one side and people on the right talking on the other. You've lost that balance. And I think we're seeing the fallout of the loss of that balance, whether you're talking about Tony Blair in England ruining the Labour Party or Hillary and Reagan, actually, probably ruining whatever left there was there, the anti left. I can't left. Think mm. what, what uh, um, the right's uh, right about. You know, actually, uh, well, you know, small government, yeah. um, the, the the libertarian right. I kind of, I, I, I can, uh, I can understand why people at this stage where governments are so corrupted and full of war criminals that they mm. are saying, "Leave me alone." Just let me get on with my day-to-day -day uh, job. I don't want anything. I just want you to have a small taxes. government. I want you to have as minimal control as possible. And I can understand why people are getting to that mm. point because they've seen well, all this corruption. Well, but let, I would argue let, that we've lost the balance let me just, that we used to have. Let me just reply. I mean, I, I, I don't agree with that. I, no. I think, you know, the, the, the issue we're discussing, you know, the issue of Assange, Manning, Snowden, the danger of war, mm. um, the danger of, you know, complete and utter censorship across the board, internet censorship um, by Google, by Facebook, 
um, censorship of the media by the media itself. Um, well, the right used to be know, into free all, speech, though. All, all, of, all of these things are the product of capitalism yep. in its death throes, mm. um, and the solution yep. has to be socialism. Mm. Um, any, you know, that that's that's the, um, you know, we. Uh, the reset has yeah. to happen, isn't it? <laughs> Any major problem you can point to in the world, yeah. uh, I mean, climate change is another one, yeah. you cannot address unless you can get rid of the profit system. Um, the control over the world's right. the world's politics and the world's economy, the lobbying by, of governments by, by corporations, a, a, a tiny minority yeah. of extremely wealthy people, right? Um, and that's that's the system, you know, of of capitalism. Mm. Uh, so so as you know, as socialists, yeah, the the issue of uh, freeing Assange, freeing Chelsea Manning, mm. um, is something that absolutely is is bound up with the fight against capitalism mm. um they yeah so i guess the right wing wouldn't be into the capitalism but they'd be just as much into the anti-war and they'd be just as much into the free speech and they'd be just as much into the anti-corruption you know whatever you want to say there's people on the right that believe that and there's a hell of a lot of bernie supporters who were so disgusted with the way the democratic party was going in the states that they either went green independent stopped voting altogether or they went to trump and unfortunately, that's where you have it. And so there's a lot of good people, I think, that are, are sucked in by this man, <laughs> you know. But also, you know, just as bad as on the other side. Well, there's no balance. But what, you what, know? what you're talking about is political confusion. Yeah. And, and th there's no shortage of that. No. You know? I mean, I mean, you know, that's true, probably. Some, not, not everyone who voted for Trump is a raving racist. That's what I want to just push. That, yeah. That's, that's true. You know, I mean. And I think there's hope that, for those people because they but, were well, anti-war and they were free speech. Well, well, there's, there's hope, hope needs to die, no, just no, like Obama. He's just, gone. Just, just to there's, there's hope, in, but only if we can build a socialist movement in America, in the, completely independent of the Democrats. Yeah, hopefully, you know, completely opposed to both major parties. That has to win, you know, the mass support of the working class. Um, I mean, some big names have to do an exodus from the party and literally leave them and do do it on a massive scale so that they can bring. Well, into I don't a think so. I, d I don't think it will come from any from either of the existing parties. No. I, mean, I mean, look, you know, they're so discredited, they're so hated yeah. by the American population. Start again. Who are the Democrats both, and the Republicans? Both Democrats I and don't Republicans. Know. Absolutely. I, I think they have this uh, patriotic. Ah, uh, fervor to them, these Yankees. Mm -hmm. and Both sides. They're gonna just, they just think their country's the greatest on ever, on earth, you know. So well, I think the media gonna, would like you to think that, but I'm no, not sure I, they, I do. they do. I think there's a lot of very yeah. unhappy well, Americans. I, I listen to unhappy Americans. <laughs> yeah. Now they're the yeah. only ones I actually play on, on here. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, one's that protest. Yeah. Uh, what, what, I so, would, what I would really encourage you, you and, and listeners to do is to, is to look at what's going on in the American working class, where there, where there is a huge um, growth of discontent. Mm. I mean, look at the massive protests in Puerto Rico recently, um, you know, where they forced a Democratic governor to resign mm -hmm. um, over his, his corruption and his hatred of the poor and his, his total contempt for them. And look at the, the other thing, the, the general Motors strike that is currently underway yes. where yeah. nearly 50,000 people um, are you know seeking to fight back against decades of attacks on their living standards mm. um, what else more money. you know massive protest when, when Trump announced his racist ban you know on Muslims <laughs> there were massive protests across yeah. America yeah. Mm. you know so so there is you know there is hope or there's reason to be optimistic in mm. that sense I think uh, um, but the America but, you get presented is from a boardroom but it needs it, it <laughs> needs a, a socialist Party. It needs socialist leadership and socialist <laughs> direction. We've got about uh, a minute left, so let's, let's hear uh, uh, the closing statement. Oh, or something. please let me talk about yes. candles for Assange because I go feel quite quick, proud that New it. Zealand has managed to bring this movement into existence. So please go and check out candlesforassange.com or our Facebook or Twitter group because it's pretty cute. <laughs> Thank you. And, and I'll just say, look, you know, uh, Assange and Manning are class war prisoners. And, you know, we, the Socialist Equality Group, the World Socialist website, are appealing to young people, working people throughout the world, this fight for their freedom. Um, and uh, Your kids' free press is in jail awaiting extradition for the death penalty. If, if, if you oppose <laughs> war, if you support freedom of speech, if you're against social inequality, um, this is, you know, your fight. Mm. Uh, well done.
Kei te whakarongo koutou ki te kupu nā te kupu. We have had Tom Peters from the Socialist Equality Group and Alex Hills from Free Assange NZ.
Someday you'll find your true forever.